Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. This is video 3 in the final GIMP series that I'm putting together for using Python for writing your own scripts in the GIMP. And if you hear that noise in the background, my dog is a little bit upset that my wife went out tonight, so she's whining and pacing around frantically. I apologise if that gets too distracting. Anyway, on with the show. So if you skipped the previous two videos, I hope you understand how to use variables and how to um, call functions and what passing arguments into them means and all that kind of thing. If you don't know what those things mean, um, I'd advise you to go back and either watch video number one for variables or video number two for functions. But anyway, in the last couple of videos, we looked at the basics of programming. So like I said, what variables are and what functions are. One of the things Python is great for is its range of extensive modules that extend the functionality of the language. Now we won't look at these um, in very much detail, we won't look at how they're made or what's in them, um, but we just need to know how to refer to the functions that exist within modules. So just to make that clear I'll give you an example. Uh, firstly what we'll need to do is open up the Python console, so if you remember you go to filters, Python foo and console. Now the module I'm going to access first is the math module. So to import that, we just say import math. Now you remember how I said Python is a very readable language? This is a perfect example of that. You want to import math, you just write import math, it's beautiful. That allows us to access the math module. We can use the math module to access some values and some functions that make math easier. So for example, the people that wrote the math module knew that you might want to know the value of pi, you might want to know the value of e, or you might want to know how to square something, or you know, it, they built in these values and they built in these functions. So I'm just going to show you one of their values just so you get an idea of how that works. In the last video I talked about you can write a program that will figure out the area of a circle. So we, we won't write the actual function for this, but I'll just show you how you can access pi, because if you know your kind of basic maths, in order to find the area of a circle, we need to use the formula pi r squared, where r is the radius, and obviously I don't want to type in 3.1 blah blah blah, every time I access pi I just want to say, you know, gimp, you know what pi is, or python, you know what pi is, so give me pi. So in order to do that, what we can do is, um, we use something called dot notation. So if I want to access pi from the math module, I use the name of the module, so in this case math, followed by a dot, followed by the object we want to access from the module, in this case the variable pi. So I can just say print math.pi. And there it gives us a obviously truncated version of the value of pi. And I can use that to calculate the area of a circle as well. So, so I'm not calling upon the square function as well. Let's just say, for example, the, um, the radius we're looking at is 5. You should know that to get 5 squared, you say 5 times 5. So what we're going to say is print uh, math.pi uh, times, and then we're going to say r squared uh, is 5 times five. Oh. Okay, so what that will do is it will say um, pi times r squared, which is what five times five represents. And there we go, that's the area of our circle if the radius is five, whatever's, you know, five centimeters. So why do we need to know how to import modules anyway? Well, all of the GIMP functionality we want to access from Python is stored in a group of modules collectively known as GIMP foo. Okay, so G-I-M-P F U. If I want to use those, I can say from gimpfu import asterisk, which is saying um, it will import all of the relevant GIMP modules in one go. So there are several GIMP modules. There isn't just one module called gimpfu, um, but the group of them collectively are known as gimpfu and we want to import all of the relevant modules associated with GIMPFU. When I press enter, nothing happens, except that Python just got a whole lot more powerful. So what does that give us access to? 
the easiest way to get a sense of what we can do now is to open up something called the procedural database. Now we can access the PDB, as, I, as it's otherwise known, in two ways. In the, if the Python console is open, we can press the browse button, which is down here. Okay, so if I click that, you can see up here, I've got the Python procedure browser, and I'll show you the rest in a second. The, the second way I can open the uh, Python procedure browser, or the, uh, the PDB, is to go to help and then go to procedure browser and it tells us here it lists all available procedures in the PDB. Now that's actually slightly different to the other one I just opened up. If I open them up side by side you should be able to see it's hidden behind that window which is a little bit annoying. The one that I opened up from the help menu just says procedure browser the one I opened up from within Python is called the Python Procedure Browser. Now that seems like an insignificant difference, but it's actually quite important. The reason this is particularly important is because the way GIMP has its functions written with these um, with these dashes, that's not the way Python functions are usually written. This, these were originally written in a programming language called Scheme, which used dashes or hyphens. Um, Python doesn't use them in that way, it uses underscores instead. So by using the P Python procedure browser, we can actually access Python specific versions of these, which becomes quite important for the thing I'm about to show you. So with this open anyway, I'll just close the, uh, the help based one because that's not useful for us. With this open, by default, we have uh, roughly 1200 scripts that we can access. If you've installed more plugins or you've written some yourself then that number will go up but by default there's about 1200. Finding the function that you're after is pretty easy with a little bit of common sense. So let's just say something that is likely that we'd want to do on an image might be to desaturate it to make it black and white. Um, if I want to find a desaturation function in the GIMP um, I can just go to the search bar up here and type in the things that I think it's going to be called. So I know, because I use GIMP a lot, that they call that function desaturation. So if I just start typing in desat, um, you can see that eventually we get to a point where there are, in my search results, there are four options. Python foo extreme unsharp desaturation and unsharp desaturation options aren't ones you will see. These are ones that I've written. That's why it's Python foo and not just GIMP. I'm going to show you in later videos how to make those two. They're going to be some of the sample ones we make. So if they don't show up for you yet, don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. You'll have them later. So what this shows is, is there are two things we can do to desaturate an image. We've got GIMP desaturate and we've got some parameters over here. It tells us it works on a, dra a drawable. And here we've got um, GIMP desaturate full, which has slightly different options. Um, and it tells us that the second one, um, the desaturate mode, takes an integer and that integer, um, whether it's a 0, a 1 or a 2, has a different effect. So desaturate lightness, desaturate luminosity, desaturate average. If you've used the desaturate filter, um, or rather the, uh, the color command for desaturation, you'll probably remember that the box that pops up gives you those options, whether it's lightness, luminosity, or average. So it allows us to access anything that you would be able to click on in those boxes. So it's quite an important thing to be able to do. What you'll begin to find is anything you can do by hand in the GIMP, you can also do with a script. You just need to kind of figure out what the little options are and all that stuff. That's eventually what we'll be working towards. So if we've got a function that we want to use, how do we actually use it? Well, we use the same dot notation that we used for math.py. If we opened up the Python procedure browser from the console, we can actually get the line of code we need very easily. That's the real benefit of using the, the browse version and not the help version. All we need to do is double click on the procedure name and it will give us the Pythonic version to the console. So if I want GIMP desaturate full, I can double click that and immediately it prints to the console uh, PDB, 
which is the name of the module that we're accessing it from, the procedural database, dot gimp underscore desaturate underscore full, and then in parentheses we have our two arguments, drawable and desaturate mode. If you watched the last video, or if you remember from the last video, some functions have variables passed into them in parentheses. Um, so we can see that this desaturation function has two variables that it needs, and we'll need to remember that if we use it in our script. Uh, we can look that up in the PDB for more information. Um, so I told you about that earlier, about we can see the type. We can also get a description of some of the information it takes. There is also more help available online that can answer other questions we may have, but we'll look at those once we start scripting real plugins for ourselves. So that's all we need to know from this video. The key things to remember are that Python uses modules to access some special variables and pre-made functions, and these are referenced in our scripts using dot notation. We also learned that we can launch the procedure database, otherwise known as the procedure browser, and if we do this um, from the browse button in the Python console, we can actually get correctly formatted Python functions which we can copy and paste into our scripts. So in the next video, we're going to look at an extremely simple example of writing our own Python script from scratch, and um, I hope you find it useful. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.